So I hold in my hand a powered KLR lower dash. In today's video, uh, we're gonna go through this. We're gonna install it on a 2018 KLR, which sits behind me, but it should work for 2008 all the way to 2018. Welcome back, Bikeaholics. Ryan Erlacher here, lawabidingbiker.com. I always thank you, that's right, you, for checking back in. All right, briefly, a couple things up front before we get installing this. Very nice add-on to your KLR. As you can see, it's got a couple 12-volt power ports for your accessories, because you know the KLR doesn't come with any of that. Uh, it does have a voltage meter here, and uh, over here, it's got an on-off power switch for the entire dash, and you've got an additional toggle switch over here where you can add any other aftermarket accessory. One I can think of would be extra running lights. Oh, and you probably see this other stuff beside me. Let me tell you what this is. This is a KLR dash kit. This is the upper dash kit. Allows for some windshield adjustability and an entire upper dash where you can install a whole bunch of accessories of your choice. Gives you a lot of flexibility. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you're notified when I put out a complete install and overview video of this kit. And so with that said, what do you say we get this bad boy installed, huh? Oh, and I just wanted to mention real quick, this is not a sponsored video. I bought everything myself and I have no affiliation with this company. But if you appreciate the videos we put out on this channel, you wanna support us, I will put links to the products in the description below. You can either get them right from the Law Abiding Biker Store or there'll be affiliate links. Either way, if you click through and make a purchase, we do get a kickback. It helps support us here at this channel, helps us keep the lights on. All right, just got a socket on a T-handle. This is an eight millimeter up front here and the rear. We're gonna remove both these bolts because we're gonna to have to remove the side panel so that we can get at the seat bolt and get it off. And again, there's two on each side on these panels. Get that back one out of there and that releases this panel. And we'll sneak that out of the way and I'll roll around to the other side and do that one. And switching out to a 10 millimeter socket, we'll get this seat bolt out of the way, one on each side. There we go, I'll move around to the other side. And with all that removed, we can lift up and slide the seat out of the way. All right, with our eight millimeter socket, I'm just gonna remove this top one here from the fairing. These are the same on both sides. One on top is shorter than the one on the bottom that we're gonna remove. Okay, and to get this dash piece all the way out of the way, it'll make things easier. There's one more screw up top here. Be careful there, don't lose it. There is a spacer in between this piece and this piece, but it's just one Phillips screw and it's the same on both sides. And I'll just use caution not to lose that spacer as I'm taking this off. I'm just reaching in here and grabbing that spacer and it's a little guy, so be careful. And then we can just pull this and the washer out. And there's just one more eight millimeter right up in here. And it's in the same exact spot on both sides. And with that released, we can get this side fairing out of the way. All right, moving up to the left side of the bike. You see a rag there, that's because I will spill just a little bit of fuel. Make sure your fuel shut off valve is off. There's two lines up in there that we're gonna have to remove and they've just got little retainer spring clips, so to speak, on them. And just make sure you pay attention when you're taking them off so you know how they go back. There's no easy way about this, but I like these little pliers, the kind of miniature pliers I have, especially the curved ones. You can see I've got that one hooked and I can kind of spread it apart and move it down out of our way here. All right, I've got this one worked out of the way down there so I can pull this line now. Kind of got to just twist these lines a bit if you've ever worked with these fuel lines, they're kind of a pain sometimes. There we go. Now there's another one back up there. It's just really hard to show you. You're just gonna have to get back in there. It comes off the same way. That's what I'm gonna be working on. And there you see, I got that uh, back line off too. And now we're just gonna move up to the top rear of the tank. Just make sure before you take these lines off, you know which one goes to which one's a fuel, one's a vent. I've marked them a long time ago with colored tape so I can never mix them up. And they don't even have clamps. They just pull right off. And we'll pull the second one off. That's the fuel line because some fuel came out of it there. All right, and with a 10 millimeter socket, I can go ahead and take both these bolts out. And there is a washer and a bolt, and then there's a rubber spacer there. And we'll get this side out. All right, with all those taken out, that should release our fuel tank here. Just make sure these two lines clear there. And you kind of lift up the back. Then you can pull this out. So if you don't know the way these tanks work, there's a big, huge rubber grommet on both sides here. And then on the inside of your tank, there's actual channels in there. I don't know how well you can see those, but there's channels that actually go over those when you're putting it back on. So you kind of feel for that when you're sliding it off and on. 
So now we're going to focus our attention to the front of the bike and we're going to move in here. We're going to be working right up those two bolts there you see at the front of the fork. It's the same on both sides. It's got some wire guides attached to it. We're going to be removing those. All right, and we're up at the left front of the bike. It's the same on both sides, but you can see on the front of the forks here, there are two bolts and I'm using a 12 millimeter socket and attached to it is a metal wire guide is what these two bolts here are holding down. Get those broke and we'll get these backed all the way out and save these because we are going to reuse them. All right, and you can see that it was a wire guide that those were attaching there and we can get rid of this because we're not going to need it anymore. All right, and coming in with the lower dash panel here, I've got the black and red wire and I'm actually just going to run both of them between the forks and the frame on the right side here and I'm just going to pull them through, pull some slack through here. Then we can set this dash panel in place like so, making sure all the wires are routed because we don't have the wire guides anymore. The uh, dash panel here now is going to act as our wire guide. All right, so we've got our dash situated in place here pretty much. And you can see on this, there's only one hole on the actual lower dash plate. And that is going to line up with the top hole on the uh, fork clamp, of course. So we'll get the, and these are the stock bolts, the ones that we took out that had the wire guides or the cable guides there. And then of course, in the bottom hole of the fork clamp, we'll go the other bolt there. And I'm gonna get these started on both sides. And I'll get my 12 millimeter socket on here. I'm just gonna get these snug down just a little bit. And I'll finish off on these fork clamp bolts with my torque wrench. And the specs for this bike are 15 foot pounds. There we go. Good to go. And I'll torque down the other side. All right guys, real quick and we'll get right back into your video. A lot of man hours effort and of course finances go into keeping this YouTube channel going strong. There is a way you can support us by becoming a patron member, link in the description below. Basically you pledge a certain amount per piece of content, no risk to you because you can put a monthly cap. There are benefits such as t-shirts and stickers, access to the private Facebook group, it's a troll free zone, access to our live video broadcast and chat, access to our premium videos up on request and access to those ride and meet up events. All right, let's get back into your video. All right, so you can see I've ran both my wires between the forks and the frame. I'm gonna leave plenty of slack so the bars can turn and all that. You don't wanna really tighten things down. Uh, of course, the red lead is longer. It can go all the way back to the battery. Uh, additionally, if you want, uh, you can tie this wire. You could clip it and tie it into any wire, you know, that has an ignition uh, source. So it goes on with the ignition. Um, just be careful that you're not putting on something that takes too much load or anything like that. Um, but nonetheless, you could do that and then everything would go on and off with the key. But don't forget the lower dash does have an on off switch. You could turn it off so it's not any big deal. And they clearly wire it out of the kit uh, this way. So they recommend, obviously, it seems like going all the way back to the battery with that one. As far as the black one, you can really tie this to any ground you want. And uh, they've actually picked a spot that they recommend. And if you just peel that back a little bit, we can remove this. It's just kind of a wire guide. And we'll get that out of our way. And then we've got a 10 millimeter socket here. And again, this is just where they recommend, which is why I'm going here. And we'll back that out. And we'll take the ground lead, of course, and put it on the back side of this wire guide there and back right into the metal here where it's attached to the frame. We'll get that wire guide before we tighten it down back underneath like that. And I'll get this snug down with my 10 millimeter. There, and that should be good and grounded now. And we can just uh, bend that back over. And then you could clean this up a little bit with a zip tie or whatever you want. Just again, make sure you leave plenty of slack. And if you don't have one of these T-handle socket drivers for working on a KLR, it definitely speeds things up. We do have these if you're interested over in the tools section of the Law Abiding Biker store. All right, so how you route this is really up to you. It does have some zip ties in the kit. Of course, I'd use some regardless, but uh, just you know, make some decisions, but you certainly wouldn't want this going over the top of anything, the seat where it could get pinched or the tank. So I'm gonna go underneath where the tank actually bolts down. So just some simple decisions like that as you bring it back, make sure there's no pinch points or anything like that. And then of course, I am going to actually install that terminal to the positive side of the battery. All right, I'll show you real quick what I did here. Again, it's pretty much up to you, but zip tie up here, I'll clip that. Of course, just wanted to show you where I put it, black and red, and then I tied in ground there, ran it back farther, 
course just got a zip tie there and then I was able to actually run it up underneath here as you can see and then up underneath where the tank sits where it bolts down so it doesn't get pinched and then if we move up underneath the seat here you can see I just basically stuffed it down in there that's the inline fuse there's one for my battery tender but whatever you got to do there but you can kind of see how I went underneath and underneath there and up around uh, again just to make sure that it's not pinched or anything like that all right we'll move up and take a look at what this bad boy looks like all installed and it does fit very nice in there it looks very good of course with that upper dash installed and uh, we'll test it there's your power switch and everything's powered up your ports and all that looks good and then don't forget over on this side right here you've got this extra toggle which isn't hooked up to anything but you could hook up any type of accessory on the back side of that that you would like so overall very pleased with this all right i got to get the bike back together don't forget subscribe because lots of videos coming upper dash panel for a klr we've already done a skid plate panniers pannier racks we're going to do a rear shock spring tons of stuff coming at you so uh yeah peace i'm out